Uh, hey, Violet, it's me, uh, Wayman, and um, really enjoyed the video. Uh, I just thought I'd come on and uh, share my thoughts about it. And um, I've been um, researching uh, um, anthropology and all of that. Um, I read a lot of <clears throat> Native American I ideas, and um, there's a ritual for everything. And I think that a lot of times, uh, sexuality, uh, when when a lot of these like journey into manhood, these groups are composed with with therapy. Um, they they end up doing it the wrong way, meaning that uh, they go back and they look at cultures, and 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 I think that a lot of times um, they end up uh, confusing puberty rites and coming of age ceremonies with. Um, with uh, rituals dealing with uh, sexual orientation. And um, I got wondering about that because uh, I knew that there were some Native American um, <clears throat> uh, rituals where men would, they would reverse uh, gender roles, you know, where, where they would dress up as women and things like that. But I never really looked into the study um, on how uh, homosexuality was uh, integrated integrated into the uh, cultures of some of these natives native groups this is this could be you know whether in Africa whether in North America South America uh, that they, they had a way of dealing with um, with with everything uh, to include the person into the culture uh, because the person was uh, very important and, and a lot of times these puberty rights you know these kids were kidnapped out of villages uh, you know every ritual is different if you're you know, in Africa or Native American, um, you know, one of them was, you know, like they, they'd send you to like the man camp, not necessarily the man camp, but it was uh, so that you would come back and you would be treated as a man and as an adult member of the community, uh, which defined uh, what your role was, what your expectations were of the community and, uh, you know, religious teachings and, and how you fit into that and how you could uh, contribute and be, and be a part of that. Same same thing for women too. There's coming of age for women, and, and I think that with with a lot of these groups, um, it's assumed that people had a traumatic uh, childhood, which isn't the case at all. You know, and if you didn't have a tra some some traumatic happen to you, you, you you have to think it up, you have to make it up. You know, maybe there was one time when Dad rejected me. Um, you know, that's what did it. But that's not the case, and and I think the push uh, for this kind of idea. I, I seen it start back maybe 10 years ago with uh, Focus on the Family and Dr. Dobson when he's discussing um, the rise of feminism and the decline of masculinity. Like, that was his idea, you know, like, oh, you know, because we demasculate little boys, uh, you know, uh, you know, they grow up to be, you know, wimps. But that's not the case at all. Uh, because, because why? Because uh, when you read um, mythology, and um, you read of cases, the, the Amazonian women, uh, which, which we were talking about yesterday uh, on blog TV, uh, they, um, they were powerful. And number one, they had to be respected. They were always respected, highly respected in the literature. And number two, uh, when, these, when fighting against the Amazonian women, um, you fought against them like you were fighting against men which was another form of respect. And uh, when uh, the, uh, both Hercules and um, uh, there was another character in, in the Aeneid kills the Amazonian hero, uh, he, um, he falls in love with her uh, as she's dying. You know? so, so there's that huge respect. And, and usually you find it in especially the Homeric epics uh, you know, men standing over another man's body, and uh, same thing for the woman, and and lamenting on how great of a warrior he was, and and paying respect. So, so I guess that like Dobson uh, totally took this twisted um, Freud Freudian view and messed it all up, and then they they made it well. Sexual orientation is something that can be changed, but rather than integrated, uh, you know, like. In the past, it was done through ritual. Uh, now it's trying to be changed, which is impossible. Uh, even Roy Hazelwood, uh, who is a uh, 
who who is part of was part of the um, violent crimes, uh, violent sexual uh, behavioral science unit of the, of the FBI. Uh, I got to see a workshop. He said that kids uh, are very impressionable uh, to fetishes between the ages of four and seven. So uh, those things develop. And he did not believe that therapy uh, changed sexual orientation. And this is a sex crimes expert. And because uh, he, he, he was talking about uh, pedophilia and those things. And he thought pedophilia was sexual orientation. Can't be, can't be changed with therapy. It can only be monitored closely. And, and you're right uh, about uh, being abstinent uh, and uh, not having uh, sex. But I, I looked it up, especially in Native American culture. There was uh, a two-spirit tradition in Native American culture. And, and I'll get the link. And, and I was like, well, maybe, maybe this was, uh, you know, by the gay agenda, uh, something new that was made. And, and, you know, but apparently there were real rituals like this. And I found it really fascinating, especially, you know, uh, with the Navajo and the Apache, where um, if the parents seen that the male wasn't attracted to male things and, and uh, forming the male duties, they would figure out how to raise him uh, on the feminine side. And, and they embraced that. So now he has a role and, and he can take part in the society. And I, and I think today uh, we don't have those clear definitions because there is no ritual uh, saying exactly when men are men or when uh, women are women or when the androgynous or the androgynous or whatever sexual orientation you are. Uh, and a clear definition of roles in the society under those orientations that you are. And, and I think that the society is missing that. Like, to me, there, there needs to be some, uh, there needs to be some line that you cross that you definitely know, and you're delegated uh, those roles by the society you're involved with rather than uh, rejected and pushed off to the side. I mean, even in native cultures uh, I've read where they make room for uh, schizophrenics and um, things like that, where, you know, obsessive compulsive disorders, uh, these people, you know, were put in charge of, you know, rituals because they would, you know, do the same exact thing all the time. And they believed that they needed to in order to bring about a successful day or a successful battle, uh, you know, and, and I think that a lot of these rituals uh, that people do came about from maybe people who had OCD back in the day and they just didn't really understand it, but they use it as a way to integrate it into their culture and uh, society. And they use it as a positive thing rather than like today getting everything all mixed up, uh, use it as a negative thing. And, and I seen, and I read the article, uh, excellent article, Journey into Manhood, where the atheist goes undercover. Uh, beautiful. Because, uh, I think that you can see a lot of the, a lot of the uh, misconceptions being played out by people who aren't educated enough about the process and about the psychology of sexual orientation, where maybe these ancient groups, these ancient cultures didn't know about it, but they handled it in uh, very clear and precise ways. And if we could capture that, I think it would help us out in our therapy today. And, and I think that we can appreciate for, for, for all of his work, but uh, a lot of his ideas, um, you know, are pretty questionable now. And, and we understand a lot more than we used to. But, but I think that, um, you know, we, we need to look back and, and really look into what these ancient cultures were doing when they went about the process of integrating people into the group because back then everybody was important you couldn't toss anybody out and um, the homosexual uh, orient orientated uh, individual threw a spear just as straight as the straight and uh, it's pretty amazing and with don't ask don't tell being repealed i, I think they're going to get a chance so um I don't know, I just thought I threw that in there. I'll throw the links to the uh, spirit tradition of the Native Americans uh, down below. And uh, because when I seen your video, it, it prompted something about the Amazonian women that we were talking about. And I was wondering about the uh, rituals because Native Americans had rituals for almost every, anything.
um, how they handled that. And uh, it was just as I suspected. So take care, friends. And remember, everybody's thinking alike. And somebody isn't thinking.